response is sensor to carbon monoxide, the response, the response was like this. Time, carbon monoxide concentration. Yeah. For different concentrations of carbon monoxide, this is a sensor. This is a sensor, yeah? Can I get the same result for different concentration of high of mercury vapor here? With my arrangement, this one. Commercially available, I bought this in a in a uh, from the company. I exposed this to mercury. Can I get the same sort of response for different concentration of mercury or not? What sort of response I will get? Very simple question. At frequency, the frequency range is limited. Don't complicate life. Life should be simple. <laughs> Go straight to the point. Straight to the point, you know? Privately, I'm saying when you are dealing with, you know, Kore in Corrida, Corrida, go directly. Don't. <laughs> am, I, am I able to get the same sort of response for this or not? Yes. If, you, if, you, if you reset, yes. Pardon? If you reset your sensor, yes. What do you mean? Okay, be more specific. What do you mean reset? Uh, when you detect uh, 100 ppm, yeah. you need to reset. Uh, what do you mean reset? Uh, in general terms, clean the sensor. Clean the sensor. Look, in the case of carbon monoxide, the procedure is very simple, yeah? Because I put the sensor in a gas chamber, Gas chamber is filled with a dry air or near nitrogen. Yeah? I expose this to certain to carbon monoxide with certain concentration. Now I purged. I purged the chamber with dry air. I remove carbon monoxide and coming to the next concentration. So always coming back to the baseline. This is baseline, yeah? The more stable, more flat, I'm more happy. In this case, what I should do to get similar results? You said clean, reset, good. You are on the right track, right track. But let's, be, let's go a little bit deeper. What does it mean to clean or to reset? You already replied. Clean means? Eliminate the mercury. Remove mercury from the gold. We have to remove this. Because if we will not remove, if we will not remove, the situation will be like this. The next day, when the second nurse broke the thermometer, we will get this response. Yeah? This is not a sensor. This is not a sensor. This is detector. You have to distinguish between these two terms. Detector, detector, people who are working in nuclear reactors and dangerous environment, they have different sort of nuclear radiation, alpha, beta, gamma. They have these badges, yeah? Badges. And these badges are showing them the level of radiation. They are not interested, they are interested only if the dangerous threshold was crossed or not. If it's crossed, time to run immediately <laughs> to save the life, yeah? So they are not interested in sensing. They are interested in detection. We are interested in sensing. We have to come back to the baseline. So we have to remove mercury from gold. What is the best way to do this? Simple base question based on the common sense. Heating. Heating, of course, heating. So in other words, 
In other words, we have two ways. Either we will integrate with the commercial available sensor, we will integrate the heater, heater, people are doing this, heating element, mercury vapor is removed from the gold, and we will get this sort of response, yeah? This sort of response. This is the... This is the solution. 100, 200 ppm. Yeah? So we have to... The job is more complicated than for the carbon monoxide. That's right? But the simplicity of this technique, simplicity of this technique. First of all, you have the commercial available element, no need to fabricate in a gas sensing field. You can deposit, you have a direct frequency output signal. We already know that we are able to measure frequency much more accurately than resistance or voltage or current. Yeah? And the next, we can deposit our nano material based thin layer on this on the top of this element and we can measure concentration of gas. Any sort of gas with a proper layer. So you can do this in your own laboratory. It's a very nice, very nice approach. Simple and powerful. Simple and powerful. Now when we look at the sauer bray equation, sauer bray equation, at the first glance, you can conclude that, well, it's a wonderful element. Wonderful element. What I did with the second laser pointer? Strange. OK, it was only one today. Then higher resonant frequency, then higher sensitivity. But you have to have in mind that we are limited. We have limitations. Why? Because if we use very high resonant frequency, let's say 100 megahertz, 100 megahertz, the plate thickness is so low, is so fragile, that practically it's almost impossible to deposit any layer any layer. So practically, in a chemical sensing field, because this element was proposed for chemical sensing in both, not only in gas media, but also in liquid media with a special arrangement, we are practically limited to 30 megahertz. 30 megahertz. The commercially available elements are operating up to 100 megahertz. But for chemical sensing, 30 megahertz is a reasonable limit. Reasonable limit, 30 megahertz. When we calculate, when we calculate the mass sensitivity, mass sensitivity for uh, let's put it here. If we calculate the mass sensitivity for uh, 30 megahertz QCM. The mass sensitivity is on the range of 10 to the minus 9 gram. It means it's in a nanogram range. Nanogram range. Nanogram range. Nanogram range. We cannot achieve anything more with this element. Nanogram range means practically part per million concentration level for gases. Nanogram range. When we are going to measure gas concentration at PPB range, we have to use different elements, different technique, and we will discuss this later. This is surface resonance. Sur surface waves, surface waves. In this case, we can work with much higher resonant frequency. The equation is similar. Again, again, mass sensitivity depending on the square of resonant frequency, and we can go down with the concentration rate. So, okay. 
Okay, so transduction chain for this element. Transduction chain for this element. Input value, mercury vapor concentration. When mercury molecules are absorbed by gold, we can get mass change. Yeah? Mass change, mass change is causing now very important point, physics, physics, now physics. How this element operates? This element, this element is called quartz crystal microbalance by microelectronic people, but is also called bulk wave device, bulk wave. Because acoustic wave, acoustic wave, which propagates between two gold electrodes is a bulk wave. It's not a surface wave, it's a bulk wave. So bulk wave electrode. When mass changes, mass changes, the velocity of the bulk wave changes. So we have to have some background in physics to design this transduction chain. Bulk wave velocity changes, and the next, the next, as a result of this bulk wave velocity changes, we're getting frequency shift. So this is a full transduction chain for this element. Full transduction chain. Yeah, we are not missing any sub block. Full transduction chain. This help us to have a basic engineering understanding of this sensing mechanism. And of course, further on, we have to move with the physical chemistry of surface. Yeah? Physical chemistry of surface to improve. But one of my ex PhD students is currently working for Alcoa Company in Australia, Alcoa Company. They are, they are widely using mercury to mining, mine, this is mining company, big mining company. They are mining gold in Australia. And mercury is used for gold extraction. So they are inhaling, these workers are inhaling mercury and they should, they should monitor mercury vapor concentration. And, uh, okay. So this is the example. So we'll move forward after the break, yeah? We can relax a couple of minutes. Now, one more remark, because when the lady in the corridor asked me about cadmium, if the cadmium molecules are present in air, which you are inhaling, we can do the same job with cadmium. But we need the proper selective layer for cadmium. Proper selective layer. So we can use this element, but we have to deposit proper selective layer for cadmium. We can do the same job for carbon monoxide using the proper layer. You can deposit your nano uh, platelets yeah, on this, the surface of this element, and you will have a very nice chapter in your PhD thesis. Very nice chapter, because <coughs> conductometric approach is, the, is a powerful approach, is simple, but everybody is doing conductometric around the world. Yeah? Not, this technique is not used by everybody. Okay? Any questions? Questions. I love questions. Discussion, questions is good. Yeah? Especially difficult questions are improving blood circulation. Alejandro, you will ask me very difficult questions. I'm not sure if I will be able to reply, but let's try. That's easy. This is an easy question. Uh, it, regarding the, the frequency you mentioned, about 30 megahertz. Resonant frequency yes. limited to 30 megahertz, yeah. Does it depend on the size of, the, of this device? Absolutely, okay. absolutely, absolutely. Uh, mainly from the plate thickness. Because plate thickness affects bulk wave velocity. Plate thickness. So if we, if we make a smaller device, this frequency will change. 
Yeah, very important point. Very important point. Now, let me let me discuss one thing. Again, simple question to the audience. Yeah. Alejandro, Dr. Alejandro used the term smaller, smaller. I will make a very simple comparison. But before I will ask this question. We discussed static properties of the sensor. The second, later we'll discuss dynamic properties. Very important, how fast sensor responds and how fast sensor recovers, recovers to the baseline, yeah? Very important performance. Now, when you are dealing with dynamic performance, which element is preferable, smaller or bigger? Very general question, any type of sensor, smaller or bigger? Pan? Smaller, that's the common senses, yeah? When I'm climbing, when I am let's say climbing in the mountains, if I have a heavy backpack, I am not so fast. Light backpack, I could be much faster. Simple, yeah, smaller. So smaller is better from dynamic performance point of view. And, uh, but again, situation is, is, is slightly complicated. I tell you why. Because in sensor technology, usually people are thinking in the terms of miniaturization. And there is a myth that everything what is miniaturized is better than if it's not miniaturized. Not always, not always, not always. Sometimes there is no need for miniaturization, no need. For instance, for instance, the best example is intracranial pressure measurements. When you look at the brain, brain profile, brain profile, it's like this, yeah? This is a screw. This is a screw. If I am designing intracranial pressure sensor with a planar structure, planar structure, in order to measure intracranial pressure, if I will miniaturize this, miniaturize my sensor, I'm not able to place it properly. Maybe, maybe by accident it will drop here. Or if, I will, if I will not miniaturize, if I will not miniaturize, they will be like this. It will be placed properly to the surface of brain, and my result is perfect. So keep in mind that depending on the application, miniaturization is not always the solution. But in chemical, in chemical sensing field, in both gas and liquid media, miniaturization is good. It's always good. Small element, better dynamic performance. That's right. Any other questions, discussion? Please ask. Not now, after the break, yeah? <laughs>